Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. You can't operate in the law of faith in your head. You have to get it in your heart. The Word is nigh you. It is in your mouth and it's in your heart. First, it's in your mouth. If you don't get it in your mouth, it, it will not be in your heart in abundance. Now, in Matthew 12, Jesus said, A good man out of the good deposit of his heart, he brings forth good things. Now, he didn't take time there to tell us how to get the good deposit in your heart. For he said, Out of the abundance of the heart and the mouth speaketh. Now, when we start confessing the Word of God and saying what God said about us in His Word, the first stages of it is doing very little to change your situation or your circumstance. First, it's causing faith to come and renewing your mind to the Word of God to where you go to thinking like God thinks. And if you say it long enough, it becomes true inside you. It gets on the inside of you. Now, God's Word produces after its kind. If you say it the way God said it, It'll produce the results he said eventually. Won't happen overnight. Won't happen just because you say it. Now listen to me carefully. It won't happen just because you say it, but saying it is involved in causing it to happen. Just like you'd say, a farmer won't necessarily have a crop just because he planted. You have to do a lot to a crop. You have to keep the weeds out. You have to fertilize it, water it, and take care of it. And the uh, same way with saying. It doesn't happen just because you say it. But yet saying it is involved in causing it to happen. And this is where people miss it sometimes. Before faith comes in abundance in their heart, they give up and say, well, I, this confession stuff just hold, puts me in bondage. You don't know what bondage is till you quit confessing the Word of God. <laughs> and, and the people that don't confess the Word of God, they're usually confessing what the devil says. And then they want to know if you have a word for them from the Lord. Yeah, I quit listening to the devil. <laughs> word is nigh you, is in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So God taught Abraham faith. Now the law of faith works by the principles that Jesus gives us. Whosoever shall say, believe, doubt not in his heart, believe what he said, will come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Now turn there to Luke's gospel. We've quoted it several times, but I want you to see it in your Bible. Luke, the 17th chapter. Now I'm not going to take time to deal with the context of this. I just want to deal with what Jesus said about it. Uh, in verse 5, the apostle said unto the Lord, Lord, increase our faith. You know, Peter had said to him, How shall I, my brother, trespass against me and I forgive him? He said, If he uh, trespass seven times in one day and repent, thou shalt forgive him. The apostle said, Lord, increase our faith. At least they knew you'd have to do it by faith. You can't do it naturally. So you, you have to do it supernaturally. And uh, then Jesus said, If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto the sycamine tree, Be plucked up by the root, be planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Now notice Jesus said, If you had faith as a seed, you would say. Now people that are not willing to say what the promise of God says about them do, do not have faith as a seed. What kind of faith does a seed have? Faith has can do faith. I mean, the seed has can do faith. It says, if you plant me, I'll show you what I can do. But any farmer knows no seed will be any good to you unless you plant it. I mean, for its production is concerned. You must plant it first. <clears throat> so Jesus tells us that if you had faith as a mustard seed, and I mentioned this last night, I'll repeat it again. The reason Jesus used the word mustard, one of the reasons at least is because that mustard plant is a plant that you cannot hybrid, you cannot crossbreed it with any other plant, will not take. You cannot cross-pollinate any other plant with a mustard plant. So he's saying if you had faith it wouldn't change. You would say even to an inanimate object. Now he's already proved this to be true in Mark eleven twenty three where he spoke to the fig tree, and the fig tree withered and died. 
Now, back before I even got a hold of this message, my wife planted a, a tree in our yard. She bought a, a sycamore tree and planted a thing. It was about this high when she planted it. And I just, I told her, I said, I'm going to pour diesel around it. I'm going to kill that tree. That tree is not going to live in my yard because them big old leaves, they'll grow all over the yard. Man, they're the biggest mess. We used to have some in our yard, the reason I knew. And I mean, I talked that tree to death. <laughs> and I didn't even know this principle then, see. They've already proven that if you talk to your plants and your flowers in the house, they'll grow better. Now, folks, that's scientifically proven. And uh, I kept bad-mouthing that tree. And that tree got 20 foot high. And one day, that tree died. And I like to got in a heap of trouble. She said, did you pour diesel around that tree? I said, no, honest, I didn't. I didn't. I wanted to, but I didn't. Killed it with my words. Didn't even know what I was doing. Jesus said it would obey you. It would obey you. If you believe, if you doubt not in your heart, and you believe what you say, it will come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, there's a fellow said to me one time in a meeting, he said, I've heard you and Brother Copeland teach on this. So he said, I had a tree in my, between me and the neighbor on the line there. Big old tree, I don't know what kind of tree it was. But he said, I wanted to cut the thing down because it blowed leaves in the garage and limbs blew off of it and this, that, and the other. But he said, I knew it was on the line. I was going to have trouble with the neighbor if I did. So, so I just started applying the law of faith to get rid of that tree. Every time I'd get out of my car, he said, I'd just point out and say, be plucked up by the root. In Jesus' name. And he said, my wife thought I was a little bit loony, you know. But I just, she, he said, I just kept saying it. For weeks and months, I just pointed that tree, she'd be plucked up by the roots. He said, came a thunderstorm one night. And uh, he said, he got up the next morning, and uh, it had wooden lawn furniture sitting out in the front yard. But he said, the wooden lawn furniture was not even turned over. No limbs blowed off of any trees, but one tree plucked up by the roots laying right in the yard. <laughs> he said, that'll jerk the slack out of you. Now, evidently, a little tornado just swooped down, just hit that one tree, sucked it up by the roots, went right back up. What caused it? Faith-filled words. Faith-filled words. Now, people don't much believe that. But Johnny Johnson, if you remember, he was, he was Assistant Secretary of the Navy. He was a black man. He was Assistant Secretary of the Navy under the Carter administration. And uh, he got a hold of this faith teaching. I heard him give this testimony in a full gospel businessman's meeting. And, and he was teaching a Sunday school class. And he was teaching, uh, Whosoever shall say, believe, doubt not his heart, he shall have whatsoever he saith, and say to the mountain, be removed. And some fellow came to him and said, Now, <clears throat> Brother Johnson, uh, you, you're just teaching error. Well, what error am I teaching? Well, you know this stuff ain't going to move just because you talk to it. Well, he said, Jesus said he would. Well, yeah, but now that wasn't what he meant. Well, he said, how do you know it wasn't what he meant? He killed a fig tree that way. Well, he said, now, <clears throat> I've got a pile of dirt out in my backyard out there along uh, the, uh, close to the street where the city come, came in there and they dug something up. I don't know what they did, but they left a big old hole out there in a big pile of dirt. The kids get out there and play on that and said, I'm afraid some of them are going to get hurt on it. And, and uh, Now, you mean to tell me if I talk to that, that dirt will fill that hole up? He said, well, Jesus said it would obey you. I'm just telling you what Jesus said. He said, well, let's just talk to it then. So he went out there and talked to the dirt pile. Felt stupid doing it. And, uh, and they prayed and agreed. Now, Lord, you said, whosoever shall say, believe, doubt not in heart, believe what they say, it will come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. We thank you for it, praise you for it, in Jesus' name. The dirt, the hole is filled up. Well, he, Johnny Johnson was 
busy talking on the phone one day, and the phone rang, and he heard the secretary answer. He said, no, he's busy now. He's on the phone. And, uh, or busy. I don't think he was on the phone. He said, he's, he, I can't disturb him now. She said, sir, I don't care what the dirt did. You, you can't. <laughs> He said, hold it, hold it, let me talk to that fellow. He said, you won't believe what happened. He said, I probably would, tell me. He said, the county came by with a backhoe, saw that dirt out there, saw kids playing on it, went out there and smoothed it all up today, about five days after he talked to us. Now, see, the idea that some people get is that that dirt just going to jump up and run over here and fall in the hole. <laughs> He said, got the same results as, as if it had. See? See, we get all kinds of ideas how God's going to do it. But he got the same results, didn't he? Now, you see, uh, at my office building there in England, Arkansas, I had sold some property. Uh, I owned all the property there for a, for a mile from the, the corner where it cornered England. And and I sold part of it to a fellow who built a Dairy Queen on it. In fact, it was the Queen of England. <laughs> so my office was right next door to the Queen. <laughs> anyway, he used part of it, and then, then he decided to sell the other part of it. And, and I was going to buy it back from him because we had our office built in there. And, and I thought, well, we may need to expand, so I believe I'll just buy that back. So I went over there and found out it's for sale. I walked over there and I did what Jesus said. You know, Jesus said in, in Luke 17, whosoever shall say, uh, if you have faith as much as seed, you would say to the sycamine tree or the inanimate object. So I walked out over that lot and I said, listen to me, I'm talking to you. Jesus said you would obey me. Now, see, if you go to Luke, the sixth chapter, Jesus said, he that cometh me, he gives you three things to do to be successful in life. And they're very simple. Whosoever cometh to me, heareth my sayings, and doeth them. Now that's as simple as you can get it. Three steps to be successful in life. Cometh to me, heareth my sayings, and doeth them. I'll show you who he's like. He's like a man that built a house, he dig deep, and he laid the foundation on a rock. When the stream wind blew and the stream beat vehemently on it, could not shake it, for it was founded on a rock. But whosoever cometh to me and heareth my saying, and doeth them not, he's like a man that built a house on the sand. When the stream beat vehemently against it, immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Now, the problem is that I, I looked at that for years, and I thought, you know, how many of you know this was not a housing project he's talking about? Yeah. Talking about individual lives. I thought one of these fellows was saved and the other wasn't. But they could have both been tongue-talking, Bible-toting, full gospel businessmen. One of them came to Jesus, heard his sayings, and did them. The other came to Jesus, heard his sayings, and didn't do them. Now, Jesus said it could not shake the man that built his house on the rock. Now, when you study that, the doing the sayings of Jesus was the foundation. He laid the foundation on the rock, which is the Word of God. He based everything that he did on what the Word said. But doing the sayings of Jesus was the foundation. And reading that one day, I, I, you know, I was meditating on it, and I could see that Jesus had prophesied I was going to fail in life if I didn't do what he said. And so I just started thinking, what did Jesus say? What did he say? What was his sayings? And mentally, the Holy Spirit began to take me through. Whosoever shall say to the mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, shall not die in his heart, believe what he saith, and will come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. And uh, if you had faith as a seed, you would say to the sycamine tree, be plucked up by the root, be planted in the sea, and it should obey you. So this, this piece of property came up for sale. So I go out there, and I'm just going to do what Jesus said. I walk around over it. I said, listen to me, I'm talking to you. I call you into the ministry in the name of Jesus. And I'd 
pick up a little bit of the dirt and talk to it and say, I call you into the ministry. You are mine in Jesus' name. I scatter it out and just walk around and talk to the ground. Now, somebody said, didn't you feel a little silly doing it? No, I felt a whole lot silly, but what's that have to do with it? Jesus said, do it. <laughs> Remember what Jesus' mother said? Whatsoever he said, you do it. You may not understand it, but he said it would obey you. Well, I made an offer on the property. No, it was a good offer because I sold the property a few years before, and I offered him about three times what he paid me for. But he turned it down. Well, the real estate lady said, well, don't worry about it. She said, I'm, I'll keep up with it. It's a good offer, and I don't think anybody else is going to pay more than that for it. Uh, you'll eventually get it. I said, well, I believe that. So I went on, and I guess two or three weeks passed. And we went to the office one morning, and, and, and I looked, and there was a sign on that lot there. It said, Future Home of the Production Credit Association. And now... My carnal mind says, uh, now what you going to do, big mouth? Somebody's bought the lot. And uh, so, so my, my head's bugging me over to him. Wife came in. I said, did you see that sign on our lot? She said, yeah, I saw it. I said, they can't do that. That's our lot. I've already talked to it. Now, remember what the uh, Scripture says? Whosoever shall say, believe, and, and be not undecided in his heart. Now, see, I'm in a point where I'm about to waver because they've already got a sign up on it. My carnal mind saying, yeah, you've already lost. It didn't work this time. But Jesus said it would. So I, I just, you know, I'm thinking about it. These thoughts passing through my mind, see. In a way, you talk a take a thought by saying it. You see, I was about to take one. I said to her, you reckon I better go talk to them folks? They can't do that. That's my lot. I'm called it into the ministry. Jesus said it would obey me. So it kept bugging me for a few days, and I got up one morning, and I'm walking through the house. Remember right where I was, walking down the hall. And, and my carnal mind just said, sounded like it just screamed out at me, now what are you going to do? And you see, I got the Word in here. Remember what Jesus said, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask what you will, say what you will, declare what you will, pray what you will, and it shall be done. Now my reaction is, this thought comes through my mind. Now what are you going to do? It came right up out of my spirit, and I heard myself just hollered out loud. I said, I know what I'll do. Nothing. Jesus said it would obey me. He told the truth or he lied. So I just went on. Amen. It's settled. My corresponding action is to do nothing because I've already done what Jesus said to do. Now, if I go over and start trying to talk them folks in to let me have a lot, I've got over into unbelief. And I don't believe what I said. Amen. See, the thought came, but I didn't take it. What did I do? I took a different thought. I know what I'll do. I believe what I said when I talked to it. So I just went on, went down to White River and had a Dominion seminar <laughs> over the fish of the lake. <laughs> <laughs> and two or three days I called home and my wife said, uh, that real estate lady wants you to call her. So I called her and she said, uh, are you still interested in that lot? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, would you still pay what you offered? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, well, you know, it's funny. They decided they're going to build over on the other street. I said, I don't doubt it. <laughs> now, see, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you. Now, see, I was at the point I could have cast out the word in favor of what happened. Well, it didn't work. Yeah, it's working all the time. But the enemy is trying my faith. It's not God trying my faith. He's the one. Jesus is the author of your faith. He knows it'll work. If you just hold fast to it. See, the Scripture says, hold fast to your confession of faith, or profession. The word profession in the Word of God, when you see that, it means confession. Same word. Hold fast to your confession of faith. You have to hold fast to it, or the enemy will steal it from you. See, all outward circumstances said, it didn't work this time. You just well as to give up. It's, 
Didn't work. Well, it didn't end there, you see. I ended up buying the, the property. We didn't need the property, really. Come to find out, we didn't, uh, didn't need to expand the building. And a few months, why, a fellow came by and he said, I, I want to buy that piece of property over there. In fact, it was just, <laughs> it's just crazy. the same guy sold it. Well, I, I mean, the same guy sold to it first. Really, the guy that sold to it first had sold it to another fellow. And I bought it from the other fellow. Anyway, the, the guy that bought it the first time came to him and said, I'd like to buy that piece of property back. <laughs> I said, it's not for sale. And I said, I, I just don't want to sell it. He said, well, I want to build a grocery store. And he said, that's, that's about the best place that I know to build it, best location. And uh, I said, well, I really don't want to sell it. You go ahead and see if you can find another place. I really don't want to sell it. But, you know, if you don't find another place, why well, come back and let me know. Because I, I'd about decided I wasn't going to expand the office at that time anyway. So he come back in about a week. He said, you know, he said, I looked all over town. He said, this is the, only, this is the best place. And, and uh, he said, what would you take for it? And I said, well, I, you know, you understand me, I don't really want to sell it. And I'm not trying to just rip you off or anything. But I said, I just quoted him twice what I paid for. He just wrote me a check. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now, the story didn't end there, you see. <clears throat> Now, I'm showing you what will happen in chain reactions when you go to apply the law of faith. Now, we used that ministry office there for, for a number of years. In fact, that was, oh my, that was back in 78 uh, or 9 or 80, somewhere along in there. These people moved over on the main street that goes to Stuttgart there. It was, one street went this way and we was on that street and there was an intersection here. And the other street went this way to Stuttgart. And they built down here. And we were on this one. And, of course, this one's on the one that goes to the school. And, and when you, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and 8 of the morning, you can't hardly get into the office there because of the school kids driving. So we were driving along there one day. I went to the office one morning, and I noticed this, this PCA had gone out of business, and a doctor had bought that office building they built and added on to it, made it twice as big. And then he went out of business. And I drove by there one morning, there's a sign sitting up said, uh, for sale. And I just kind of glanced at it, didn't think anything about it, and went back by there, and, and I had a thought. I'd make a good office building. And we could get off that busy street. And uh, so I looked at it and said something to my wife. I said, let's go look at that building out there that's for sale and see if we want to talk to it. Now, every piece of property I've sold or bought in the last 20 years, that's the way I bought it, that's the way I sold it. I talked to it, and it obeyed me. And, uh, but you better be sure you're ready to buy it when you talk to it. So we went and looked at it, got a key and went in and looked at it, and, and we decided, yeah, we want to talk to it. So we talked to it, called it into the ministry. We call you into the ministry. You, are, you belong to us in the name of Jesus. And uh, so we called them, and of course they wanted something like $249,000 for it. And I prayed about it. And so I offered them uh, $110,000. <laughs> and uh, they turned it down. And... Uh, and the, the Lord said, uh, I had a thought, see, and I took it. You know, this is a nonprofit organization. This is a doctor that owns this building. He's probably made pretty good money. And uh, the Lord said, offer him 120000 and a tax deductible receipt for everything it'll praise over 120. He took it. So not only did I get the, the lot that I talked to, but the people that went and built on the other feet built me a ministry office building, and I got it at nearly half price. <laughs> and why? Because I did the sayings of Jesus. I'm holding in my hand a book that is probably the most important book, could be the most important book you have never read. <laughs> it's Success Motivation Through the Word of God. 
Now, you know, most success motivation books are dealing with the mental realm only. This book deals with the spiritual aspect of it. It comes from the Word of God, being motivated to success through the Word of God. God wants you to be successful in life. He doesn't want you to just be on, as someone said, live on barely get along street and just barely make it in and maybe he'll build you a cabin in the corner of glory land. No, you need to prosper and be successful in life. Now, here are some of the titles of the uh, chapters that we have in this book. One is called The Source of Our Supply. God is the source of our supply. Uh, another chapter is called Dominion Through Kingdom Principles. They're kingdom principles based on the authority of the Word of God that will cause you to be successful in life if you'll set them in motion. Chapter 12 is doing the sayings of Jesus. Now, I could preach you a sermon on that. In fact, I have many times. Doing the sayings of Jesus. Just do what Jesus said to do. He said, speak to the fig tree or speak to the sycamine tree. Speak to the mountain. It'll be removed. It would obey you. Didn't say it obey God. Get motivated to success through God's Word, God's will for your prosperity. If you don't know it's God's will for you to prosper, you won't prosper probably because you think it's not God's will. Then taking no anxious thought. We have a whole chapter on that. Take no anxious thought. Oh, yeah, it's all right to take thought, but don't take anxious thought. The way you take thoughts is by saying, what are we going to do? You know, interest rates going up or down, whichever way would be bad for you. And then uh, somebody comes along and says, the stock market's going down. What are we going to do? Your faith always stops at the question mark. With the last chapter in this book is worth what the book costs. This book is $6. It's offer number 2508. 2508, it's $6. Success motivation. The last chapter is called Poor Mouthing or Prospering. Poor mouth Joe and prosperous Joe. It's a hypothetical story about two fellows. One of them believed the Word of God and confessed the Word of God. The other one said it didn't make any difference what he did. It wouldn't work out anyway. And uh, one of them loses his job and gets a better one. The other one loses his job and whines and cries and, and gets coffee spilled on him and nothing works out for him. It's all because of his attitude, because he wasn't based on the Word of God. I'll tell you, this book will help you to get out of the mully grubs and get you on success track based on the authority of the Word. Tape offer, our book offer, number 2508, $6. We have a toll-free order line, 1-877-396-9400. That's 1-877-396-9400. Until next time, this is Charles Capps reminding you that the enemy is defeated and God is exalted and Jesus is Lord. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, ebooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.